Hello there, my darlings. How's it going? My name is Craig, and today I'm going to be going over my Ninja deck profile because I promised this deck profile a little while back in one of my Yugo Pro dueling videos, so I've been delaying it because of laziness and procrastination, so I figured I would finally get around to it. Um, I'm actually going to go through this deck profile a little bit differently than I have before. I'm going to run through the uh, pro actual profile of it, the cards, fairly quickly. Then I'm going to go back and have um, an explanation segment after that, where I explain things. Because a lot of people are impatient and uh, they don't want to hear explanations because they know what the cards do. Uh, but they just want to see ratios. So um, I'm going to run through the deck, show you all the ratios of stuff that I run. Uh, maybe a couple explanations here and there, but I'm going to save all of that for uh, that actual explanation segment after the deck profile. But without further delay, here we go. So to start the monsters with, we have two White Dragon Ninjas. And we have two Twilight Ninja Getsuga the Shogun. Some great new support from Breakers of Shadow. We have three Ninja Grandmaster Hanzos, my boy, the main searcher of the deck. Then we have two uh, Shingetsus, Twilight Ninja Shingetsus. Again, really good support from Breakers of Shadow. Then uh, for the uh, Elemental um, Ninjas, the Armor Ninjas, we have two Earth Armor Ninjas, which is essentially a Cyber Dragon, two Flame Armor Ninjas, which opens up our Rank 5s, and uh, one Air Armor Ninja, which opens up, uh, well, Rank 4s, but uh, in combination with Earth Armor Ninja. Then for the final monster, we have one uh, Upstart Golden Ninja. And that's it for the monsters. So for spells, we have two Magic Planters and one Armin and Jitsu Art of Alchemy. I mentioned those at the same time because Alchemy is very similar to Magic Planter, just a little bit different and of course searchable with Hanzo's effect. We have uh, two Pot of Dualities and one Reinforcement of the Army. I mentioned those at the same time because of course before I was running three Rota, but uh, Konami took that away from me. But I have found that um, after putting in the two dualities to try and get that Hanzo first turn, it actually works better because a lot of the time I'll just start with the Hanzo. And um, the duality helps me dig for more traps to back up the Hanzo. So I've actually found that it works better than running three Roto. But if I had the choice, I'd probably try and fit in two Roto, two duality at some point if uh, Roto ever came back to two or three. But uh, yeah, duality is definitely a great choice for the deck because you want to go first and you want to get your Hanzo to plus and set up your plays, so it works fantastic. Then we have one Soul Charge, one Twin Twisters, and one Raigeki, and that's it for these spells. The traps, we have uh, two Ninjutsu Art of Super Transformations, two Ninjutsu Art of Duplications, two Ninjutsu Art of Rust Mists, which is uh, kind of an underplayed Ninjutsu Art card, but I fucking love it. And then one Ninjutsu Art, uh, sorry, Armor Ninjutsu Art of Freezing, one Ninjutsu Art of Decoy, and then that's it for the Ninjutsu Art cards. For the rest of the traps, we have three Fiendish Chains, two Call of the Haunteds, one Horn of Heaven, one Solar Morning, and one Bottomless Trap Hole. So let's move on to the extra deck. We have one number 12 Crimson Shadow Armor Ninja, one Blade Armor Ninja, and for the rest of the Xyz, we have uh, number 80 Rhapsody and Berserk. Cowboy, Diamond Direwolf, Castell, uh, Excalibur, Honor Arc, which a lot of people aren't running anymore, but I mean, fuck, it's still a fucking fantastic card. I don't know what they're smoking. One Ragnar Zero, Kane Gorgon, Master Key Beetle, Utopia, and Utopia the Lightning, Orcasaurus, and finally one number F Zero, Utopic Future. So let's uh, go ahead and head on into the explanation portion of the video. So the two White Dragon Ninjas and the uh, two Super Transformations are of course um, an interruption play. It's very easy to set up, um, especially because of course every Ninjutsu card is going to be searchable with Hanzo. And it just kind of helps you set up really, really easily um, in order to uh, just interrupt your opponent and it gets you uh, your White Dragon Ninja. Um, which will be essentially, by the way guys, if you don't know what this does, um, to break it down, um, you can target a ninja monster you control, a monster your opponent controls, send them both to Grave, and if their levels equal... Um, uh, seven, you can bring out this guy um, from your deck, and uh, he has a continuous effect where he will make it so that all your spell and trap cards cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, or by, by any card effects. So uh, that kind of interrupts your opponent, gets rid of one of their monsters, and then of course brings out one of your own. Uh, so they're going, uh, they're just essentially going minus uh, for little to no reason. So it's great monster removal. Um, however, it does not work well with pendulum decks because uh, your pendul opponent's pendulum monsters do not go to the graveyard, which they need to do for this to count their levels. Um, 
So essentially, you're just going to get very few chances to bring this guy out. So these four cards, when you're going up against Pendulum decks, you definitely want to side out. I'll have some recommendations for what to side in uh, later in the video. But yeah, um, basically a really good interruption play. Super simple to set up. Twilight Ninja gets Suga the Shogun. This guy is fucking fantastic. You can tribute summon him by tributing one ninja monster you control. And then, when he's in attack position, you can target two ninja monsters in your graveyard, except a copy of himself, switch him to defense, and if you do, special summon those two targets. So, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly run over a combination, which will plus you five cards, just from having one Ninja Grandmaster Hanzo. And that includes this card, and it really shows off this card's strengths. So, that combination is gonna be, uh, if you have the Hanzo, normal summon it. Hanzo's effect, you will search your duplication, and set it, of course. And then during your opponent's end phase, uh, if your Hanzo survives, usually you have other back row to back him up and stuff. But uh, because of this one Hanzo, this is what's going to happen. You're going to, during your opponent's end phase, duplication, which tributes a ninja monster you control for cost. And then special summon ninja monsters from your deck with levels equal to or less uh, the levels of the tributed monster. So that will actually let you bring out another Hanzo. Now because this Hanzo was special summoned, you can search a ninja monster from your deck, letting you search your Getsuga to your hand. So it goes to your turn, uh, we'll ignore the fact that we draw a card, and then we can tribute our one ninja monster for the tribute summon of Getsuga using his effect. And now we have this, that of course starts floating. We activate the effect of our Getsuga, targeting our two Hanzos, our initial one and the one that we brought out. Switch him to defense, special summon both. Both the effects will activate, and that gets you uh, plus two. So, usually you're going to want to search to your hand another copy of Getsuga and an Earth Armor Ninja because it's a Cyber Dragon. So, because of that one Hanzo, you've gone from one card to six cards. Now, of course, this is floating, but um, even though this is floating, you can use Magic Plant as an Alchemy's on it, so I don't count it as a dead card yet. But uh, yeah, that lets you search those two. And of course, this is a Cyber Dragon, so if your opponent clears your board, you can Special Summon. Tribute one ninja monster, normal summon, effect, switch him to defense, bring out two more Hanzos, get two more searches, and go crazy. So, this guy opens up so many plays in the deck, and just from the one Hanzo, if your opponent can't stop you, um, or you can stop them from stopping you with more back row, of course, um, you're gonna plus five from one Hanzo. So, that's insane. A great combination in the deck. Um, so, that also shows you some utility for, uh, for Earth Armor Ninja. But yeah, that's uh, Getsuga right there. And then, of course, I kind of explained one of the main combos with Hanzo, so I've essentially uh, covered Hanzo, but that's why you run three. A fantastic card. Then we have the Twilight Ninja uh, Shingetsu. So uh, Shingetsu, um, while he's face up on the field, your opponent cannot target any other ninja monsters, face up ninja monsters, for attacks or card effects. So if you have two, it basically makes it uh, so that your opponent's in a lock. He can't target any ninja monsters for um, attacks or card effects. So that's really, really easy to do. Shingetsu also has another effect where uh, when he is destroyed by your opponent's card effect or by battle, he can search you a ninja monster from your deck except another copy of himself. So he can search you your Hanzos. You have your two Earth Armors, your two Flame Armors, and your one Air Armor. So Earth Armor is, like we just covered, a level five Cyber Dragon, but just a ninja monster. Um, Flame Armor, whenever it's summoned, you get to target a ninja monster you control and increase its level by one. So essentially, if you have no monsters but you have these two in hand, special, normal, effect, increase level by five, two level fives. And then uh, this will decrease a ninja monster's level by one instead of increasing. So it's like an opposite of Flame Armor. So special, normal, effect, decrease by one, rank four. So super simple engine. Then uh, the last monster, which is the Upstart Golden Ninja, um, you can discard one trap card or send one trap card from your hand to the graveyard and then you can special summon a level four or lower ninja monster from your deck. That has to be in face up or face down defense position, but of course if you bring out your Hanzo, his effect activates because he's special summoned and you get to search another monster to hand. Now we're gonna go ahead and cover these spells. Uh, Magic Plant is a self-explanatory, you have a lot of floating trap cards, same with the Alchemy, I already covered that. Uh, dualities I covered, covered. Uh, Soul Charge, again, if you're bringing out your Hanzos, your Hanzos are getting effects and getting you searches, only have a few life points left, you don't have enough to pay for more than one summon, you can bring out Getsuga, Getsuga's effect will bring out two more. So essentially you're paying a thousand for three monsters. And then of course if you bring out Hanzos, you get searches, so again, another, uh, 
another example of why this guy really opens up stuff for the deck. Uh, Twin Twisters, just like getting rid of back row. Uh, if you draw your White Dragon Ninjas, which you really don't want to do, um, you know, you can ditch him with this, it's no big deal. Uh, the Regeki is self-explanatory, you don't really want to blow up your own monsters, so Dark Hole is definitely not the best option. Uh, Regeki is a better card for this deck. So for the trap cards, I've already explained the duplications, um, but one thing I didn't cover, but you probably could have uh, guessed it, if your Getsuga is threatened, you can swap him out uh, for two level fours, because he's level eight. Shingetsu lock by bringing out these two. Um, so yeah, that's super simple. Keep in mind that if this does go away, these two will get destroyed. Um, but you won't get searches because that's your own card effect, not your opponent's. But uh, again, really, really useful card, versatile. It's great for dodging stuff. Um, so if your opponent does target this, um, you can, of course, dodge it. I mean, you could use this to tribute this and bring out another one of this. Same with White Dragon Ninja. If you have a White Dragon Ninja out, you can tribute White Dragon Ninja with this and bring out a White Dragon Ninja. Or you can tribute this and bring out a White Dragon Ninja. So it has a lot of versatility in the deck. Then we have our two Rust Mists. Um, now, Rust Mist is super useful, super straightforward. Um, while you basically it's a continuous trap card, and while you have a face up ninja monster, when your opponent special summons a monster, you're slashing the attack of that monster in half. Especially when you're gonna have uh, this guy out for at least a few turns. It makes it so that your opponent has to make very subpar plays because they can't rely on attack points. So it's super straightforward. Really, really good card. Then we have one Armin and Jitsu out of Freezing. When your opponent declares an attack while you control a face-up ninja monster, you can uh, negate the attack and end the battle phase. So it's not an if you do. So even if you can't negate the attack, if it's something like an Ultima Falcon, um, you can still end the battle phase because you don't have to negate the attack, the attack to end the battle phase. It just negates the attack, but also ends the battle phase. And then while this card is face up on the field after it's activated, your opponent's monsters cannot change their battle positions. Then we have uh, the one decoy. Um, you basically target one ninja monster you control and it can't be destroyed by battle. Uh, this essentially equips to it. It's a continuous trap card again. Um, I've actually had this become very useful um, in a skill drain environment when my opponent pops up a skill drain. This is incredibly useful uh, in that situation because it just gives you a monster which you can stall with forever until you get your twin twisters. The three fiendish chains. Um, I don't think I really need to cover that. They're continuous trap cards, so they're never truly dead. They get you draw power and they stop your opponent's plays and they protect your monsters. So obviously, it's fiendish chain for fuck's sake. You know what fiendish chain does. Kill of the haunted doesn't just get you a monster, um, it gets you your Hanzo. That's the important part. So you can, of course, use this, get back your Hanzo in end phase, search your Getsuga, um, go off with shenanigans again. So, really, really good card for deck. Again, continuous trap card, easy magic partner target. We have one Horn of Heaven. Uh, you don't really have anything that does anything when it hits Grave, but you often have floating Xyz monsters. If you have number monsters, you can't use them for Utopic Future, so they might be clogging the field. Um, again, you have the Call of the Haunted that can bring back monsters, so you just don't mind getting rid of a monster um, to stop your opponent's plays. And of course, it can stop a normal summon. The Solomon Bottomless are just standard cards, I don't think I need to explain those. So Crypto Shadow Armor Ninja, super straightforward. Um, once per turn during out of turn, you can detach a material, and then uh, during that turn, until the end of that turn, basically, uh, all face-up ninja monsters you control cannot be destroyed with battle card effects. So, really, really good card, super easy to make. Blade Armor Ninja is amazing, it really puts damage forward, but it also lets you target, uh, if you have White Dragon Ninja, you can use this to target White Dragon Ninja, and that gets two attacks. So that's gonna be a fuck ton of damage there, that's gonna be, what is that, 54 damage just from that one monster? Um, so that's just absolutely insane, you can put on some crazy damage in this deck. Rhapsody, um, you can equip it to your other Xyz monsters, it gets itself off the field um, so it doesn't clog up too much space when you're making a bunch of Xyz plays with uh, Getsuka shenanigans, but it will also help boost your monsters super high. Um, so, you know, imagine equipping this to this. I've done that several times, and it just it gets stuff out your post. It's a great card. You, you, you see where I'm going. It's a great card. Cowboy, because Cowboy for game. Uh, Diamond Direwolf. Also, I want you to keep in mind, I don't have everything I want for this extra deck right now. But anyway, Diamond Direwolf, again, is another great card that clears itself, so you can go into it, use this effect, and target itself on your opponent's back row. Clears a back row, any card you want, um, and it gets rid of itself, so it doesn't clog up too much. Um, so just a really, really good card. Castell, it's goddamn Castell. <laughs> uh, Excalibur. Um, stuff like Ultimate Falcon. Um, uh, stuff like Great Magnus, right? People are afraid of these essential, essentially god cards. They're frightened of them. You know, if Superior Dora, the big uh, rank 10 train, ever comes out in the uh, TCG, people are going to be shitting themselves. It's essentially, essentially a card that's immune, going to be immune to everything. Um, but two level fours. Um, all you have to do with Great Magnus is bait him out because he can only shuffle in once per turn. 
um, shuffling something from your field to the, to the deck. So as long as you can, you know, establish a field count early on. Um, of course, it'd be better just to negate his summon straight out outright. But if you can't, you know, just bait him with something, and then go into this, beat over him, problem solved. Having a big beater is more useful now than it ever has been. Again, Ultimate Falcon, bam, dead. Honor Arc, because Honor Arc is amazing, really underrated. Ragnar Zero, you can enable this with your um, Rust Mist, because your Rust Mist will slash your opponent's monsters in half, in terms of their attack. So, this will enable it, uh, that, that will enable Ragnar Zero really easily, um, so you can bring out Ragnar Zero, pop a bunch of stuff, and it's just really, really useful. Kane Gorgon, one of my favorites. That was actually the first ever Xyz monster I ever went into, and I will probably run it in most decks that can run Rag 4. Master Key Beetle, uh, again, not something that I would thought of running, but I don't have everything that I need, but it definitely can have its uses. Um, I don't often use it to help protect monsters, it's mostly to protect back row, but if you do that uh, Hanzo to Getsuga play, you will have two Hanzos, which are dark monsters, so you can do this, and then this will protect Getsuga. So you can do it that way, and try to keep it get super alive for another turn to have more shenanigans and then of course utopia and the lightning because the lightning is broken and again a fantastic out to things like ultimate falcon superior dora and again great magnus anything that's a god card that just is immune to fucking everything um you can beat over it still uh, so that will just it's great uh, it's a great out to a lot of things and uh one volcosaurus because it's volcosaurus super easy to make ring fives in the deck I probably would choose to run something else if I had like giant hands and reflations at my disposal, but this has come in use plenty of times and I've actually been thinking about keeping it, but a fantastic card for the deck. And of course Utopic Future, I've, I'm running that in so many decks nowadays. Um, I was running that, when it first came out in the OCG, I ran it for a, a long time in my Bujins, but then when all these other decks started uh, getting support, like I was playing Ninjas for a long time, then they got new support and then this became super viable, it's a fantastic card, definitely don't overlook it. Um, but that's the extra deck, so I'm actually going to go ahead and show you um, a couple of cards that I would recommend siding. It's not going to be a full side deck, because I don't side very often, I don't often go to tournaments, but this is stuff that I would recommend uh, siding, because you definitely want to swap out the, uh, the White Dragon Ninjas and the uh, Super Transformations when you're going up against Pendulum decks, so I'm going to show you some stuff that you could side in in that situation. So when taking out the Super Transformations and the White Dragons, uh, the cards I would recommend siding in because um, you want to maximize on your plays at that point because uh, you're going up against a pendulum deck, you need to be as quick as you can. Run a third Getsuga and another duplication. Um, because that will uh, basically just let you make a lot of rank 4 plays to sort out any problems that you might be uh, be having to deal with. Uh, maybe even side in another Castell in the extra deck just to shuffle in their scales. Um, but that's uh, definitely something you want to put in. And then I personally love putting in uh, two Starlight Roads, because Twin Twisters, Raigekis, Dark Holes, um, even Torrentials, uh, but especially Twin Twisters, um, it's just everywhere, it's fucking everywhere, Twin Twisters is everywhere, this will negate that shit, and then of course I would recommend siding in one Stardust Dragon uh, into your extra deck. Uh, find room for it, because this card has saved my fucking life so many goddamn times, it really, really, um, helps fix uh, a lot of bad situations, because I hate Twin Twisters. If I sit four back row, I want them to survive. Um, so this helps do that, but it can also it can also negate a whole bunch of other stuff, but mainly Twin Twisters. Um, and of course, if you already used one of these and your Stardust is, uh, has been used, you can still negate something with the other one. You don't have to summon the Stardust, that is actually optional. So I would definitely recommend siding in those four main deck and siding that into the extra deck. Um, a third uh, Magic Planter is definitely not a bad choice, and um, yeah, stuff like Vanity's Emptiness, um, uh, you know, Mistake even, any any continuous trap card that will fuck your opponent over, uh, that you can just ditch away with a Magic Planter, um, is a great side for the deck, Espe but I mean, something like Vanity's Emptiness, it's gonna be amazing in the deck, I've tested it, it is amazing, I just don't like running it, because I, uh, you know, I, I, I've run it about this before in my, uh, my top 5 Monarch. I fucking hate them video link there go watch it or it's gone now um but yeah uh that's about it anyway for the deck profile I'm not gonna go over a full side deck because I don't have it with me um but that was the uh, ninja deck profile so I apologize if it's a little long but it's a deck I'm very very passionate about I fucking love the deck so everything's kind of in shambles on the side here I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in my next video take care and do on